Hi, I'm Tamanna Hussain here to present my paper, COVID Lies, Detecting COVID-19 Misinformation on Social Media. This is a joint project with Rob, Arjuna, Yoshi, Sean, and my advisor, Samir. On March 11th of this year, the World Health Organization declared coronavirus to be a pandemic. Unfortunately, along with the pandemic, we've also been struggling through a corresponding infodemic of misinformation about the virus. Outrageous claims about COVID have been circulating the internet. We'll take a look at a couple of examples to get started. Here's a misinformative tweet that reads, the COVID-19 is a biological weapon, not just another virus. Please, everyone needs to wake up to the fact and understand what's going to happen to us all. This tweet is expressing the misconception that COVID-19 is a bioterrorism weapon. Next, we take a look at another misinformative tweet. This reads, hand washing is not the same as hand sanitizer. Only washing your hands with soap and water for 30 seconds will kill coronavirus. This tweet here is expressing the misconception that hand sanitizer sold commercially does not destroy coronavirus. Unfortunately, at least hundreds of people have died due to COVID misinformation. A study shows that just in the first three months of the pandemic, 800 people have died as a result of COVID misinformation, and 5,800 people were hospitalized. Health risks have been caused by ingesting methanol or alcohol-based cleaning products, eating large amounts of garlic, ingesting large quantities of vitamins, or drinking cow urine. Arsons have also been linked to COVID misinformation. For example, more than 70 phone masks in UK have been vandalized based on the false belief that 5G somehow causes COVID. Social media is a breeding ground for misinformation. This is because there's a lack of gatekeeping and regulations. There's no need to go through an editor, peer review, verify qualifications, or provide sources before posting. Social media also tends to create echo chambers or closed networks of communications in which you can avoid disagreements if you wish to do so. These create steep challenges for misinformation detection. The volume of misinformation on social media is very high. It spreads very fast. And in a new situation like the COVID pandemic, existing data sets to evaluate misinformation detection systems are also not adequate. This is because the language usage tends to be novel and the misconceptions themselves are evolving very fast. It's very urgent, especially given the consequences we noted, to develop systems to automatically detect misinformation that are able to combat these challenges. To this end, we make the following contributions. We pose the task of COVID-19 misinformation detection as two existing subtasks of misconception retrieval and stance detection classification. We also provide a data set, COVID Lies, for evaluating COVID-19 misinformation detection systems. This consists of pairs of COVID-19 related tweets and misconceptions, which have been annotated for stance by researchers from the UCI School of Medicine. We also provide benchmark models for each of the two subtasks. We'll go over each of these points in more details, first starting with the problem setup. Here, given a tweet, we're interested to determine whether it expresses any of the known misconceptions about COVID. To do this, we perform the first subtask of misconception retrieval. This retrieves a set of misconceptions that are relevant to the particular tweet in question. Then given each retrieved misconception, we perform the second subtask of stance detection classification. This is to determine whether the input tweet agrees with the particular misconception, disagrees with it, or whether it expresses no stance towards it. To understand each of these labels better, we'll take a look at a few examples. First, we start with a tweet that we've already seen at the beginning of the presentation, which expresses the misconception that COVID-19 is a bioterrorism weapon. Since the tweet is expressing this misconception, we say that it agrees with it. 
Next, we take a look at another tweet. This reads, it looks like we're all going to have to wait much longer for a COVID-19 vaccine. This tweet is contradicting the misconception that we're very close to a vaccine. In other words, this tweet disagrees with it. Lastly, we take a look at another tweet. This reads, officials confirmed three new cases of COVID-19 in Ontario, one new case in BC. This tweet expresses no opinion about the misconception that cannabis protects against COVID-19. In other words, this tweet expresses no stance towards it. Next, we move on to our data set, COVID Lies. This consists of pairs of COVID-19 related tweets and misconceptions along with the label of agree, disagree, or no stance. The tweets in COVID Lies are from a collection of COVID-19 related tweets by researchers at USC. We use tweets from between March and April of this year. The misconceptions in COVID lies are curated from the Wikipedia page for COVID-19 misinformation. Sentences with references associated with them are extracted and then manually paraphrased to be a simple positive expression of a misconception. In this way, a total of 86 misconceptions are extracted. Lastly, for the labels in our data set, they're annotated by four researchers with a percent agreement of 79% between them and a flies kappa score of 0.69. The distribution of labels in our data set is quite skewed with 85% no stance, 9.9% agree, and 5.1% disagree. Next, we move on to our benchmark models, first starting with misconception retrieval. Here, the goal is given a tweet to retrieve misconceptions that are relevant to it. That is, misconceptions that the tweet agrees with or disagrees with. In contrast, irrelevant here are misconceptions that the tweet expresses no stance towards. So given a tweet, the process of misconception retrieval accesses a collection of known misconceptions about COVID and assigns a relevant score to each of them. Then they're ranked in descending order of relevance. Finally, we retrieve the top K. We use a few different measures to determine the relevance score. First, we use a couple of techniques from information retrieval. We use TFIDF with cosine similarity and the BM25 algorithm. We also use a few techniques from semantic similarity. We use cosine similarity with average word embeddings. We use non-contextual glove embeddings and for contextual embeddings, we use BERT and domain adapted CTBERT. Domain adaptation is the process of pre-training a language model on a specific domain. Here, COVID Twitter BERT or CTBERT is BERT pre-trained on 160 million COVID-related tweets from January through April of this year. Lastly, for semantic similarity, we also use BERT score, again with BERT and domain adapted CT BERT embeddings. From the results here, we can see that domain adapted BERT score performs the best with hits at one of 61.3. We notice that using domain adapted embeddings improves the performance of BERT score. We can also see that using domain adapted embeddings improves the performance of cosine similarity with average BERT embeddings. Next, we move on to the second subtask of stance detection classification. But before moving on, let's recap a bit with where we are. Given a tweet, we first perform the subtask of misconception retrieval. This retrieves a set of misconceptions that are relevant to the particular tweet. Now, given each retrieved misconception, we'll perform stance detection classification in order to determine whether the tweet agrees, disagrees, or expresses no stance towards the retrieved misconception. There is a lack of adequately large data sets with sentence-sentence pairs for stance detection. However, there are large data sets available for NLI or natural language inference. NLI data sets consist of premise hypothesis pairs with a label of entail, contradict, or neutral. 
we noticed that there is a natural correspondence between NLI datasets and our misinformation detection stance classification, where premises correspond to tweets, hypotheses to misconceptions, and the labels also naturally correspond to each other as entail to agree, contradict to disagree, and neutral to no stance. We use the following three datasets, SNLI, MultiNLI, and MedNLI, to train linear classifiers with different features. We use concatenated TF-IDF vectors for the input pairs. We also use concatenated average glove embeddings bidirectional LSTM encodings, and lastly, sentence BERT or SBERT with BERT and domain adapted CT BERT embeddings. We also try to improve the performance of stance detection by combining domain adapted BERT score with NLI. Here, given a tweet misconception pair, domain adapted bird score is used to classify the pair as either relevant or no stance using a threshold of 0.4. Relevant pairs are then further classified as agree or disagree using an NLI classifier. Now let's take a look at some results. From the models presented here, we see that by LSTM and SBIRT with BIRT embeddings trained on multi-NLI perform the best in terms of macro average DEF1. Next, we notice using domain adapted CT BIRT embeddings improves the performance of SBIRT when trained on multi-NLI and MedNLI with the model trained on multi-NLI performing better. Lastly, we see that combining domain adapted sentence bird with domain adapted bird score improves performance for models trained on all three data sets with the model trained on multi NLI performing the best with a macro average F1 of 50.2. So in conclusion, this entire year, we've all been living through a COVID pandemic and a corresponding infodemic of misinformation there's an urgent need for automated misinformation detection systems. To this end, we've posed COVID misinformation detection as two existing subtasks of misconception retrieval and stance detection classification. We've also provided a data set COVID lies for evaluating COVID-19 misinformation detection systems. We've provided benchmark models for each of the two subtasks and also demonstrated that domain adaptation improves performance for both subtasks. A demo of our work, our data set, and all our code is available at the following link. We'd like to thank everyone who made this project possible, the anonymous reviewers of EMNLP 2020 COVID-19 workshop, the authors of related works, our annotators, and our colleagues at the Alan Turing Institute. Thank you.